doctors we are live now okay good evening vanakkam on behalf of the tamil nadu ophthalmic association as a president of the tnoa i have the greatest pleasure of welcoming you all for this inaugural walk the talk series what is this walk the talk series the walk the talk series is none other than getting inspiration from a guy who has achieved so much from the state of tamil nadu and what you call as the luminary the walk the talk series is with the luminaries of tamil nadu and today is the inaugural webinar and every first saturday of every month between 8 and 9 pm we are planning to have the walk the uh, talk series for the next 11 months with the various luminaries across tamil nadu either individual practitioners or institutes doesn't matter they have people who have set a path breaking trend as far as ophthalmology in this part of the country is concerned today I have the greatest pleasure of introducing my very very close friend the past president of tnoa and the director of tms i hospital salem the advisor for me this year none other than dr b siddarthan let's go have give a big round of applause for dr b siddarthan he is the first walk the talk luminary we are going to interview and i before siddarthan talks about his journey i'll just take a few minutes to formally introduce him i'm going to share my screen now and hope you guys see my screen able to see my screen yeah yeah yes yes more yes, as you know dr siddarthan is a uh, in my opinion a 360 degree ophthalmologist he's finished his do ms all from my alma mater madras medical college he was about 5 years senior to me in college he's got a phenomenal work experience 30000 fico procedures 8000 lasik procedures 10000 laser photocoagulations he has worked everywhere mainly in shankar netralia in vr as a vitreo retinal he worked in rao goh he worked in japan he worked with blumenthal in israel worked in eli prasad eye institute guy who has got probably a very open mind and always willing to learn he is also a member of the uh, american academy of ophthalmology and of course he's done so many other programs as a tnoa nobody can deny the role siddhartha has played in shaping the tnoa he has been almost in every position of the tamil nadu ophthalmic association <coughs> editor treasurer secretary organizing secretary and various other and president as well and his tenure as a president is probably everybody will remember because he was a grassroots level worker he went to the each and every small town in tamil nadu making this ophthalmology and optometry and the paramedical sciences available to one and all he has authored many books sita as i know is a very versatile guy and is a recipient of fine cup award is also a very good uh, for the best coffee in india and uh, recently he has written a book wherein is an english translation of tirukural which is a phenomenal book i think if you do, if you have opportunity to lay the hands on this book probably it's a, probably the one of the best books i ever read hats off to you siddarthan he is also a tabler he is an international secretary for 41 clubs international responsible conducting over 895 camps in rural salem in the in the prevention of blindness program early blindness in rural school children and other interests of course is philosophy photography personal development human resource development writing you name it siddarthan is there everywhere and it is only appropriate 
that I call Siddharth and the Sachin Tendulkar of ophthalmology in Tamil Nadu. And he is the opening batsman for us as far as the walk, walk the talk is concerned. His story is full of inspiration and motivation for everybody, for us, not only for the, uh, the residents and the postgraduates, but also for practicing ophthalmologists like, like us and Siddharthan. Over to you, Siddharthan. The ball is in your court and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, President Mohan Rajan. My very good friend and colleague for several years. Now, first of all, this concept of walk the talk is something unique. The first time it's being introduced, not only in TNOA, I guess in AOS also. And it's a very well thought of because you can learn from everybody. Everybody can teach you something. So with that in mind, Mohan has thought of this and I'm very happy to be a part of this program uh, because we don't know really how this is going to take place. Of course, I'm not going to walk. I'm going to talk. I mean, we'll be seated because of the current uh, COVID situations. But nevertheless, the concept is a wonderful one. And uh, I thank Mohan for thinking about this and then getting it implemented and also uh, in touch for supporting this program. Uh, okay. So... I was wondering, what should I talk? What should I tell you all? So I don't have any gyan or big advice to share because I'm just an ordinary being. And uh, I don't believe in unsolicited advice also. I don't give and I don't take. But I thought maybe I should share with you whatever learning I have, whatever I have learned in different stages and in different places and from different people. So feel free to adapt and improve. This is what the Roundtable Association has taught us to adapt, adopt, adapt and improve. If you notice, the life lessons are very, very simple. What gives us happiness is very simple. Life truths are very simple. They are very basic and simple. Human beings tend to complicate things, add different colors, different stories to it and make it very complicated. So what I'm going to share with you also is going to be extremely simple. No big groundbreaking thoughts I'm going to share. What has happened in my day-to-day -day life, I'm going to tell you. So the year was 1982 when two things happened. One was my, my marriage with Lakshmi, and the two, my marriage with ophthalmology. That's when I entered into ophthalmology in the year 1982, and 39 years have gone since then, and I've been picking up pebbles on the seashore as I walked along and gathered quite a few. Now, the first thing which struck me and which is still very, very strong in my mind is what I learned when I met Dr. S.S. Bhattinath for the first time in his cabin. I was a student and a, a, a medical, I mean, a undergraduate student. I met him for an interview for a veterinary fellowship. So as I entered, he introduced himself as, my name is Bhattinath. He didn't say, I am Badrinath, because he was at the zenith of his glory at that time, the biggest figure in Indian ophthalmology. Still, he preferred to say, my name is Badrinath. That reflects his humility. How humble he was. That really struck me so much. Even to a simple postgraduate student, he, he was so humble. He presented himself so humbly. That is something which will never leave my mind. So as I entered Netralia, you know, the old building had the entrance in the front. Later on, they shifted to the side. 
it, it was an old building where you enter from the main house. It was a house earlier. So when I entered through that house, straight up you'll find a wall. There, there was a wall earlier. And on that wall was written naturally a philosophy, which says the place of work is an alaya, and work will be our worship, which we shall do with sincerity, dedication, and utmost love with the missionary spirit. It is not only written on the walls of Chankaranetralia, but it got written in each and every student's heart who went through Netralia. That is the kind of philosophy that was embedded, that was imprinted in our heart. <clears throat> uh, how many, how much ever duration we spent there, this is what entered into our mind. Yet another thing what we learned, but I first time I came, came to know is a procedure what they used to call sabbatical. So a specialist from one department used to be posted in another department for a month. Okay. So I was wondering why this is happening. Later, as I grew up, I realized that is, it is cross-fertilization of ideas. So you see how the other consultant works, how he deals with difficult situations, how he handles difficult people, how is his approach, and so on. Not only in the field of ophthalmology. So I started adopting this, uh, the cross-fertilization ideas, not only observing ophthalmologists in, in, in their workspace, also other specialties and other industries and business also. We could pick up things from there. So Dr. G. Venkatesamy was an outstanding example of how he utilized this cross-fertilization of ideas. He, he was quoted to have McDonaldization of eye care. He watched how McDonald's was working. And he said, why not apply this to of uh, eye care. And that's how this concept of uh, Aravind came up. So that I read in his biography. So this, this is how the sabbatical thing is working. And since the time I left Netralia, I made it a point to visit several ophthalmologists, several ophthalmic centers, not only ophthalmic centers, other uh, 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 people in other walks of life also. You'd be surprised to know there's a lady near Coimbatore. She's called one rupee party. She sells idli for one rupee. Okay. If you are, if you search in Google one rupee party, it'll give you the exact location of her house. So she sells idli for one rupee. She makes 200 rupee, 200 idlis per day. Okay. And her gain is very meager. And she's been doing this for the past 30 years. She's 80 years old now. You see, so, <laughs> yeah, super. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the Mahindra group have given her a house and so on uh, off late. So, by working in LVP, uh, by visiting Arvind, by talking to Dr. G V, by visiting Blumenthal, and by visiting my good friend Sachikumar in Palghat, and spending a lot of time with Dr. J K Reddy in Shankara and uh, visiting CMC, Dr. Ravi Thomas in CMC Velo. Why that much? By visiting Rajan Eye Care, observing Sujada. That's where I learned my LASIK. I refined my LASIK by watching Sujada. Till then, I'm following the same steps without any change. So you pick up from every center. For example, when I was uh, in... Uh, L, uh, in uh, CMC, I used to walk in the corridor with uh, Ravi Thomas. So when he finds some trash on the floor, he'll pick it up, keep it in his hand. When he finds the nearest trash box, he'll dump it there. So that's the reason why uh, such a huge place like uh, the Aftal Department of Velo was spick and span. Not that the janitor is doing a good job, but the leader was setting an example. So when somebody sees Dr. Ravi Thomas pick up something, they will rush and come and pick it up before him. So he invites the, I mean, he sort of demonstrated that. So since then, that is being followed in my hospital. 
a team of uh, uh, microbiologists had visited our hospital once and they went and they returned. They put a note in my visitor's notebook. TMS is more cleaner than Natralia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just made a funny note because I see to that nothing is done. I picked up myself and put it in the basket. These are small things which we uh, pick up. So you'll notice that everyone you meet can teach you something. Everyone. You will, you keep looking keenly, observe somebody, they will teach you something. So like in, when I was in GOH, RIO GOH, there used to be, I think Ashokan, if, if I'm, <laughs> I remember his name, used to come from Kanjivaram. He's a very simple term, not a very high figure, an ordinary uh, 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 postgraduate. But when I was observing his surgery, that time ICC, he used to do ICC is cryo. So some, most of the time your iris will get caught or the cornea will come and fall on it, mess up. But then he was doing it so beautifully by a certain technique of pushing the iris back and applying the cryo. I was astonished. Such a simple turn. And his technique was so good. And that helped me. I picked it up from him. Like that, you will be able to pick up from anybody if you observe keenly enough. And my good friend, Dr. Madhivanan, he shared his mantra for success with me. And I would like to share it with you also. He said, do different, do more. Okay. Be it teach, uh, treating a headache patient, patient coming with a headache or anything for that matter. We don't do the same old thing what any other practitioner is doing. You have to do something different. You have to be creative. You have to approach it in a different manner. And also give more than what the patient has paid you for or what the patient is looking for. So like, for example, value addition to that patient. And uh, I, I, I'm, uh, I would like to share here at one thing which one of the patients was telling another patient in uh, Rajan IK unit. You know, this is one patient said, Sar it on the patient, where yard po matang, sar to po away matang. You know, I said, Wow, what a name to get from one patient. He's telling the other patient. I just overheard it. You know, such is the rapport you build with the patient. That's the confidence. That is the uh, rapport you build. That's a nice thing about the patient, uh, about the doctor, what he feels about the doctor. That is astonishing one. Hats off to you. You know, the kind of uh, Friendship you develop with your patients. So this mantra, do different, do more. You try and apply it in every situation. It really helps. Yet another thing what I would like to share is grab opportunities, generate opportunities, and grant opportunities. So what do you mean by grab opportunities? See, those days, microsurgery was not prevalent in, in Tamil Nadu or in India. So we used to bring uh, people from abroad, just with one microscope, and then they used to come and demonstrate how to do a microsurgery. So such was the intraocular lens workshop in Hyderabad, where Dr. Momose and Dr. Nishi had come to do a demonstration of cataract surgery. So we were hanging around with him and you know, uh, asking him for possibility of going, coming to Japan to learn microsurgery and so on. And he, he granted it. Just we asked him, he said, okay, come along. Fortunately, the Japanese government was providing some sort of remuneration for the doctors in Japan for training offshore doctors. So it just worked out. So you have to keep looking for it, keep asking, then you will get. So grant the opportunity you get. So fortunately, we could spend three months observing uh, VR, VR, fellow, VR surgery as well as cataract surgery in uh, under Momose as well as Nishi. <clears throat> Sometimes we need to generate uh, opportunities and once you come to a stage, we give a grant opportunities. Mohan Rajan, again, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to mention it. He had brought out a program where Young ophthalmologists were invited to his hospital for an observership of one week in the whichever department of their interest. My son went there 
and he was full of praises what he had learned what he has not seen in my hospital he went there and he came and said, so i saw this i said he was doing this he was doing this so he was excited about it. so this kind of opportunities we should provide to youngsters so that we develop ophthalmology in tamil nadu dr panniya selvam in erode you know the faco fellowship because of him so many youngsters have learned faco very well you know that is wonderful service he is doing and madivanan also that, that's why most of the my uh, lens drop lens, uh, my faco lens drops occurred only in the hospital <laughs> before i started my own and uh, and of course arul arul uh, arul moli varman chennai uh, he was also instrumental in bringing orbis to, to salem uh, he was in contact with the other people he brought out that opportunity to, to bring orbis online and uh, not online off plane program to Ch- to salem and these are the opportunities people provide us and then we should grab them similarly when in, it's our turn now to provide opportunities to youngers young people so that ophthalmology is tamil nadu becomes one of the uh, more, of course it is the uh, leading uh, center but i wish we will continue this one other important thing is that we need to find a guardian angel somebody whom you can refer to whom you can ask would be willing to help you sincerely and truly alma mater where can i go alma mater the f- time we started the lasik in a new center newly built center and then we put the false ring and started within a month i found there was fungus on the false ceiling because that wall that roof was wet moisture so moisture mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, i got a shock of my life i don't know what to do and rush to where else alma mater then doctor the head of department of microbiology dr madhavan he sent a team of people to salem who observed we checked it out and then who uh, sort of neutralized fermented everything and put brought back the center back to work function so and of course they didn't charge me a single paisa for all this work because we went back to our mother only mother can help you with all my mother the connection the respect we have and the uh, uh, the connection we have with all my mother is very very important and we should cherish it all the time and uh, not only our uh, netralia i have other friends also like dr j k reddy from shankara if i have a problem if i have an issue okay if you if anybody has an issue it eat your mind it sit in your mind it bog you won't allow you to sleep but i don't have that problem at all what i do is if i have a problem i throw it on to jk's head Now, he won't have a sleeping head so sleep, he will have a sleepless night i'll be quite happy then the next day he will call up and tell me what to do so like this there are friends who can help me out we build this together colleagues we work together so when there's a problem we throw it at them and they they will be able to look at it in a different angle and then give you a solution so jkl pull has is the safety net for me safety net where like the trapeze you play and then you fall down there's a safety net underneath jk and the ravi thomas and madhi were all safety nets for me now my practice was built on very very strong philosophy of netralia and arvind compassion compassion is what gv has been telling everywhere you'll find that word compassion so this our our practice my practice especially was built on these strong values it was not like mushrooms cropping up everywhere and you see what has happened to the mushrooms they're gone unfortunately many of my colleagues you know adopted that kind of approach to patient care because it is very tempting it was colorful it was alluring but then they just popped out like that but this strong foundation what arvin stands for today or what netralia stands for today what we learned from them if you if you remain there unshakable we will always be there so this is very important like 
how you base your practice on strong values. Okay, now here is something which I beg to differ from these institutes where I feel ophthalmology is not my entire life. Only eight hours a day is ophthalmology for me. After that, I don't think about ophthalmology. I enjoy life. I've traveled more than 52 countries, not just travel, lived in 52 countries for more than a week. And I've written six books. And I do what I like. Ophthalmology, yes. And those eight hours are complete dedication to ophthalmology. After that, I don't know anything about ophthalmology. And that's the way I enjoy my life. But that is personal. But if you like to be immersed in ophthalmology, it's, it's up to you. But this is how I have been living my life. Now, the most, the most important thing what I would like to share with you. Please, this is your health. <clears throat> now, if you notice our profession, we hit the peak when you're 50. You know, when I started my practice when I was 33, then you learn. Then you re really reach your peak at 50. At 50, I was at my very best. Now, if you want to enjoy the benefit of that experience and so on, you have to live longer enough. Unless you take care of your health and fitness, there is no point. Because we are not cricketers like Tendulkar. If he, he'll play only up to his, uh, his age of 30. After that, he's not going to play. So his peak time is 20 to 30. But we practitioners, medical doctors, our peak time is from 50 onwards. Okay. I used to think, maybe at 70, I will retire. Okay, I was thinking at one time. But when I met my, or my uncle, who was a former Advocate General of Tamil Nadu. Okay. He was, a, uh, R. Krishnamurti, he was 89 attending court, attending cases. COVID came in, so he didn't go to court, but still, he's now 91. He's still attending to his cases through uh, this online Zoom meeting. And I said, what am I thinking of 70? This man is working till 89, 90. So there's no retirement, okay? If our faculties are good, if our hands are good, if our vision is good, continue practicing, continue being productive. Why I'm saying this is because I'd like to quote a Lee Kuan Yew here, Lee Kuan Yew, who's the, who was a Singapore premier. Now, he had mentioned in one of his uh, interviews that his colleagues, most of his colleagues who retired and led a sedentary life all died. Of. He was the only one who was living, but he never retired. He continued to be productive. So he said, if you stop being productive, you'll, you're dead. You're as good as dead. So he said, continue to be productive. Keep active. That's the way you live your life to the very end. So I said, okay, now throw off this retirement business from your mind. No retirement. If I'm not able to do phaco surgery, doesn't matter. Focus on something else. Be productive. So here I would like to show you an example of Dr. Chalni, who is now at the age of, I don't know, ladies, we should mention the age. <laughs> <laughs> now she has started a big school in Tirumangalam. Really beautiful, big setup of school, international school. And uh, doing that work, you see, she's being productive, if not so much active in ophthalmology. But yes, it, it, the mind is active. She's productive, creative. So that is something astonishing. So these are the lessons we learned and said, okay, there is no more retirement. Forget this retirement. That's not in my chapter anymore. <clears throat> okay. Now there are some few things which, uh, do we have enough time? Or? Yeah, yeah, we have. We have yeah. another, uh, maybe five yeah. minutes. Maybe another three points we'd like to share. Uh, this is something which I'd like to tell my youngsters. <clears throat> there are things which really work for me. Okay. <clears throat> One thing is, on third post-operative day, I call my surgery patient. I myself call, not my staff. I call my, my patient and inquire about them. How are they doing? If there's any question, how are they applying the drops? Okay. Now, this really pays well. When they come back to see you after a week, doctor, in the doctor, in the market, they are so happy. They're so happy that you are caring. The follow-up 
is very important. Till that, I am doing that. Every patient I call, uh, even if I don't operate, even if my son operates, doesn't matter, I call them and inquire about their well-being, whether they are applying drop, any doubts they have and so on. That is one thing which really works wonders and anybody can adopt this principle and re it's really good. Now, yet another thing what I like was, of course, in Nepali, uh, Mohan will know that during the theater, there'll be a channel music going on. Osta Ramaya, Osta Vaya, Ramaya, Osta Vaya. <laughs> <laughs> no, some channel is, may, may, uh, music is to go on. And um, in uh, David Chang's hospital also, when he was operating, he used to have this music going on. Now, I, I see our roundtable has taught us to uh, adopt, adapt and improve. So what I have done is there is music going on in my theater each time I operate or my son operates. But the music is not what I want. It's not what I want to hear. It is what the patient wants to hear. If we have a Muslim patient, I play Yasin Surah. Fantastic. Yas, Yasin Surah is common for any type of Muslim, whether you are a, a Sunni Muslim or a whatever Muslim, nobody objects to this. We play Yashin Sura. Mohan, this really works well. Especially Muslims, when they know that I care about their religion. And when they hear that, they feel so peaceful. Okay, So I play Yashin Sura for Muslims. And for uh, Christians, I play this very old song, Jiki song, Tandani to the Pone. It's a beautiful uh, album, uh, Jiki's, Jiki's album. Beautiful, lovely songs. I used to play that. And for Hindus, of course, we have plenty of songs. TM Sandarajan, Murugan songs, so all goes on. Now, but after some time, I started enjoying this music. You know, it gives me also a mind, peaceful mind. I see, keeps on hearing that, you know, it's in your mind, like Krishna songs. And majority of them are uh, Hindus, so we hear Krishna songs. And it's nice, nice, lovely songs. Instead of uh, cinema music, I hear these uh, devotional songs suitable for this. And when there is a Malayali patient, I play Malayali Christian song, or Malayali Hindu song, you know, like that you can choose, you know, you know who's, and nowadays, you know, you don't have to have records, you don't have to have CDs and so on. You just online, you can play on the spot, you know the patient, you can change the music. And this is something has gone a long way uh, in helping me uh, calm my patients. <clears throat> now in the waiting room also, You'll find in most of the hospitals when you go in, some channel, some TV, some channel is going on, Siripoli, some channel is going on. But in our hospital, in the waiting room, uh, there will be a video going on pertaining to ophthalmology. Like we had brought out, uh, when I was the president, I brought out several brochures uh, in Tamil. Those brochures are made in videos also, that is available in our TNOA website for download. You can download it. And I play about, there are 10 videos each of the three minutes. So 30 minutes videos, they keep on going about glaucoma, cataract, everything, beautifully illustrated. So that keeps on going in my uh, patient's waiting room. So it is a, a patient education while they are waiting also. <clears throat> uh, yet another thing what we follow, uh, of course, that also learned from Netherlands is that how do we address our patients? Mr., Me. Mrs., Master. If it is a two-year-old baby, Wanga, Wanga, we never say Vada, Poda, nothing. Everybody's treated with dignity exactly this way. Baby, we call them baby. And when we call for the patient, also we call master so and so, or baby so and so. Okay. So that it is all our staff must do that. If I don't hear them do that, they get a shilling on that day. And it has become second nature for them how they call their patients. Okay, now to finish my talk, Lakshmi, you're here. Okay. The Lakshmi is there? Yeah, she's here. I wanted so, to be here. Yeah, I want to finish with a simple thing. Once a patient came and asked me, Sir, I've been seeing dots, spots in front of my eyes, so many spots coming. I asked him, Have you seen an ophthalmologist? No, sir, only dots. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, now many of you know about me quite well. But uh, uh, maybe the best part of me, you might not, might not have known very much. And I'll call the, uh, the, my best part, Lakshmi. Welcome, welcome, Lakshmi. Say whatever you want. Yes, take care. I, I was telling uh, Siddharth Lakshmi, where is she? Yeah, she's here. Yeah, Lakshmi. 
Hello everyone. Ah, hello Lakshmi. Welcome Lakshmi. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. I'm truly delighted to have been a part of this. Uh, very good evening to all of you here. And I'm truly delighted with this program called Walk the Talk. When Siddharth mentioned this to me, I said it's such a lovely program because um, I, I think this is the best way we can impart knowledge to the younger generation. And there are so many of them. So, yeah, so I truly believe that, uh, you know, success comes only with hard work, a lot of passion, a good attitude, commitment, and self-discipline. And I think our medical director, Siddhartan, has them all. So it's very easy to, uh, to bring that out in uh, our hospital because unless the leader is uh, committed, the staff will not be committed. So uh, I think uh, that is the best part of our institute. And uh, yeah, so um, we have worked very hard brick by brick and uh, every brick in our hospital resonates hard work and um, you know, very, we're very passionate towards every small brick in our hospital. And um, uh, apart from that, I have to be very proud and say that my staff are very well taken care of. Uh, I, till now, we don't have any staff who have left us. I have staff who are as old as 33 years. And uh, they, for them, if I tell them to leave, it's like, you know, I'm uh, giving them a big punishment. So maintaining them, taking care of their uh, needs, also treating them with dignity and keeping them like family is uh, one of uh, my great uh, passion, I should say. And uh, this has led to better understanding commitment from the staff because you know when they are treated with dignity, they also treat our patients with dignity. So I think that has been one of uh, our major success uh, points. And... Um, yeah, so also, you know, uh, because we are there uh, from morning till evening, uh, we are able to take care of all the, uh, you know, other jobs like taking care of the um, fire service, the pollution control, not allowing the doctors or the consultants to get hassled about all that. So they don't actually know what's happening out there. They're only focused on their patients. So they're able to give their 100% to the patient and not bother about all this. And I think this is possible only because uh, we, uh, I mean, I am there. There is a, a family member is there and we are equally passionate about the success of the hospital. I mean, we can pay many graduates to do it, but being there, uh, working with the same passion has really helped us in our growth. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's all that I have to add. And uh, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. And this program is going to be the best in all these years of you know, uh, Great job, Mohan. I'm so, okay, so you. happy that you started something like this. Yeah. Uh, I want you and uh, Siddharth to stay together so that I can, I can start the discussion. Okay, and, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, first of all... Um, no questions? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Can you be on the same screen? Yeah. Yes. Siddharth, thank you very much for your really inspiring uh, story. I would say your journey has been a really a motivating, um, a successful journey. I know uh, right from the beginning how it, it has been. And I've been a colleague in Shankar Netralia. I've worked very closely with you. And uh, Lakshmi, I know how important you are for not only for Siddharth but the entire hospital as well. Uh, Siddharth, I will, I will just ask you a couple of questions. Sure. And then I will take you uh, take uh, you to the panelists. We have an esteemed panel here, Dr. Tangavelu, immediate past president, and our secret yeah. dynamic secretary, Dr. Madhavan. Dr. Ramakrishnan, our uh, president-elect, is also here. Vice president is also here. Nirmal Frederick is also here. So I want to ask you a few things, yeah. okay? Because I always seen you, even in, as an undergraduate, as well as in the postgraduate in RAO GOH, uh, in white and white. And today, white is very important because that is the reason why I put you today because it's October 2nd and it's an, a Gandhi Jayanti. It's a white day. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I want to know what is the reason for that. Second thing is I want to ask you because you don't have any background of any doctors in your family, if I'm right. 
Am I right? Yes. yes. What made you come into MBBS, and what made you subsequently do ophthalmology as well? Uh, Lakshmi is uh, disappearing now and then. Yeah. 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 What, what is the reason for that? Number one. And uh, you have excelled in your MBBS. You have excelled in an ophthalmology, and you have uh, done your hospital is uh, actually one of the what do you call the gold standard hospitals. I would say uh, because I have seen your right from the beginning inaugural or uh, inauguration of hospital. I was there right from Timas Hospital at that time itself. It was one of the biggest hospitals in that part of the country, in that but that part of the state as well. And then you are mentioning about. humility and your uh, rapo and you know you you know uh, you you have rightly said that you should know your limitations and you should not have any ego to refer your patients jk reddy is much junior to you but still you have a good rapo with him so i think that uh, you you are breaking across all the ego barriers which has actually made you very successful in your life because ultimately what is important is i think your ultimate thing is the patient should benefit just because of you you go the patient should not lose the benefit of having a, a better what do you call the expertise or something like that. that is what is your aim uh, and you have done it with uh, yeah. Not, yeah, a lot of compassion and other things and then because i have taken about 25 messages from your talk 25 messages so i think uh, every i'm sure everybody and uh, another important thing is uh, you have also mentioned that you should have a godfather or somebody to fall back on and uh, the preceptorship you are mentioning about we are starting again the alargan is sponsoring that again probably next week we'll roll out the the program as well which is a very very good program which will benefit and uh, the music the customized music is something which i learned and for muslims i think i will start doing it right from tomorrow and uh, for muslims you are having a, a what do you call uh, the yasin uh, sura yasin uh, zirat and sura. christians yeah. is really fantastic is a lovely concept these are all very simple concepts but i think it's making a huge impact as well as the patient uh, interaction or rapo is concerned and of course you said very rightly that uh, the mushrooming of centers which not fall into the trap have strong values strong ethics and i think uh, these are all messages which has to go down into your system so that people don't uh, go after what do you call the short term money or short term gains we need to have long term sustainability you have mentioned that as well and uh, I, uh, in essence i would say siddharth it's been a fantastic 360 degree coverage i would say Uh, life your life actually you should write a book on your life because uh, you are, you are, because you are good in writing i know how good you are in writing i mean every day i am going through your trikural book my father in law swears by his book by your book you know it's really fantastic and now let's go on to the panelists tangavelu tangavelu is also got a very good uh, establishment here and in no, fact, no, and he's been a immediate past president <laughs> thing of uh, having two uh, two years uh, in tangavelu what is your take on siddhartha's journey number one and uh, what do you think uh, uh, what are the things you have learned from him and what do you want to ask him uh, first of all uh, mohan beautiful mm. topic you have chosen and the title for the tno this year uh, wonderful wonderful uh, i don't know how you get where you get these ideas from wonderful first of all and thank you for asking me to say a few words uh, walk the talk inspirational talk by uh, the first talk by the siddhartha lot of things you know we have learned uh, one by one so first of all uh, for anybody you know uh, starting for the first time practice nobody in the family is starting uh, being in this profession coming into it it is really uh, a very good uh, opening uh, For, for these people who have been listening this is a place where uh, these, these things are uh, the books don't teach books Absolutely. don't teach books don't teach nobody gives you a lecture like this you know giving small tips like the music what has been said uh, dr badrinath experience with uh, stalwarts like ji dr badrinath 
Mohan, uh, Arulmoli, Adi, so many people, J.K. Reddy. So all these people, uh, so, so to say, I moved with most of these people and close encounters. So it's very nice. Uh, so one thing is the compassion, compassionate. So you get an opportunity. So first thing is the observation, what he said, you know. Uh, I keep writing every time, you know, whenever you go, you observe, remember, and then compare. So you keep doing this. That is what I liked in uh, Siddhartan. So observation is very, very important. I visited Dr. Siddhartan's hospital before I built my hospital. You know, if he remembers, I had a look at the hospital. Then only I designed my theatre. So small things make a lot of difference in life. So pro providing opportunities. That is what is my theme in uh, TNOA for two years. You know, I said, I'll give opportunities to everybody. That is what he kept on saying. And the mentor, you know, the mentor, mentorship he was saying. And he remembers this uh, poem written by uh, Siddhartan. Lean on me, lean on someone. So you have to lean on. So he has practically done it and he has written it as a poem, as an inspiration also. During this COVID times, he has written this poem, lean on me. So it's you have to lean on somebody, trust somebody, and then take it forward. Whatever you have, all the worries, burden, you have your problems, you shift it to someone else. So they take care of you. And when they have a problem, they come back to us. Then this is one thing. And the music, I've tried it so many times. But somehow it didn't work. The system, something like that, didn't work. The first time I heard it was uh, in the Jaya Hospital when I went to see uh, part of Babu Rajendran. So they used to have uh, music playing. So I wanted to replicate this in my clinic also. We tried it for some of uh, Then the next thing is balance in life. So eight hours, we spent eight hours. I spent a little more time in this uh, hospital. There's one man show working all the time in this. But uh, this is what is very important, the balance in life. So you learn a lot of things in ophthalmology, you stick to that, you do everything for the society, all that, you stop there, then you have your family, then you have you plan for your retirement, you enjoy your time with your children now, you have your grandchildren also, Siddhartan also has grandchildren, so that also is uh, uh, wonderful. And the videos, the, uh, the books he has written, the videos, I enjoy the videos what he created for TNOA, he was an editor, he dealt very well as an editor. And then the books, what he has written, I remember he gave me a book a long time back in simple uh, Tamil language, you know, as to all the procedures, how you see the OP, how the doing an indirect, all that he has written. And the general public also, he has written a book on, uh, I don't, I, I, I just don't recollect the name of the title of that. Uh, so a lot of things, you know, which uh, really is an opportunity for anybody in the, field, anybody entering the field or who's already practicing, youngsters or people who are already practicing and elder to Siddhartan and myself also, a lot of take-home messages he has given. Thank you Dr. Siddhartan, a wonderful talk and Dr. Lakshmi, I admire your administrative work there, you take care of the full hospital, you don't involve anybody else, you take care of the whole thing so that he takes care of the treatment part of it. Wonderful, wonderful family with the ophthalmologist there. And uh, son, daughter, the daughter-in-law, all ophthalmologists. Wish you all the best, Dr. Siddhartan. And I've learned a lot. Maybe everybody has uh, learned a small bit, which can be utilized for our uh, life, lifelong journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Dr. Siddhartan. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Will, for the nice uh, words. Uh, before we go on to Dr. Madhavan, the next panelist, I would like to ask Siddhartan, why, why did he choose white and white always, number one? Number two, I wanted to ask you another thing. Um, the role of your family, especially Lakshmi, do you think if you had married somebody else other than Lakshmi, you would have been so successful? And third thing is the work-life balance, what you said just now. I think it's something which you have learned because you are not, except for graying the hair, Siddharth, you are not aged a single day in your face. Whatever I've seen you 30 years back, Right from RIO, GOH, MMC to uh, Shankar Netralia, where when, when we are together, and uh, uh, you're not aged a single day. That's because you have got a fantastic balance between work and life. And now also today also you are mentioning about the eight-hour work and rest of that. I completely cut off from ophthalmology, but eight hours I'm completely deeply immersed in ophthalmology is something everybody has to learn because I'm not able to get out of ophthalmology for almost 14, 16 hours a day. But I, it's, 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 I know it's a huge mistake. So 
and also you gave space to your children sujay and his wife uh, um, uh, his name is shruti no shruti. yeah um, everybody they came into the system and you uh, understood uh, um, that they also require space so how were you able to manage that the work life balance and uh, uh, yeah can you tell me about that more about that okay um, the few questions uh, you had asked me first is why medicine why did i do medicine um, see uh, one word is opportunity this opportunity the word opportunity has been playing a big <laughs> role in my life so we come from a very very small town of salem from a small school and uh, i am not a great uh, academic person i am not a very studious person average marks but it was due to the tamil nadu government policy at that time we were allotted 10 marks extra by dr karunanidhi till then i am grateful to that man for providing that opportunity for these backward fellows coming from villages so we got the 10 marks extra and i could just cross scrape through into medicine and why i took ophthalmology is another interesting uh, reason i was motivated by one of my uncle who was a general surgeon so i used to i was working with the dr sarath chandra in his unit and you know bailey and law such a huge book yes the yes. book talani marnu mm-hmm. <clears throat> so one day madhi and madan kumar daniel these two fellows saw me and said what is this bailey and law carrying they showed me uh, park park parks is that Parsons, Parkins, Parkins, no? Parsons, 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 Parsons. Ah, what are you doing, man? See this much? You study this? You will pass after much? Wow! I just threw this belly and you know? said, "Okay, I'll take a Parsons." That's how I came into after much. You know, basically, I'm I'm not that big as studious students or something like that. So I took the easy way out. so i did just do just for the sake of doing a post graduate because i got the seat but then when i came to ms then i said okay boss no more playing around this is serious stuff then i really got into medicine and then netrale provided an opportunity and then there on every people were providing me opportunities it's only because of people because of the good will of the people who opened their heart who opened their institute for us um, that i could come up because of it like for example i could just walk into gv's room any time go to madurai walk into his room and sit with him and chat you know i was just a pg at the time but he used to he take enough care to talk to me and he used to tell me how to build the institute how what to concentrate and so on he was very freely give, talking to me the everything he asked he used to tell me and dr j agarwal so first lecture i gave in madra mcoa uh, at that time uh, when uh, agarwal was <coughs> president of mcoa so first talk i gave there when he called me he said when here after you give any talk prepare and come <laughs> so, <laughs> i never knew how to talk and just blabbered something after my this to momo say so he can't tell me prepare properly how to prepare all that he taught me you know i mean just i mean just like jay agarwal people like to work with him they all flock to him because he's so open so helpful so kind and similarly i find the same trait in mohan everybody all the consultants like to work with him because he throws open his operation come do whatever you want free hand no nachi pudukala unmeyade people love to work with him people love to stay with him you know i i know several consultants they are all there in his panel they, because the way he treats them you know the humanness what i don't have is that i'm not a people's person i don't know how to treat people i just i'm a technician so that part is that part is uh, taken care of by lakshmi absolutely that's where she comes in otherwise i would have been a disaster you know i would have been just a technician <laughs> worth working in an institute 
nothing more than that. To run a private hospital, you need that people skill, which I have zero marks in that, and that is compensated by her. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, what what is the other question you asked? Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, regarding Sujay and Shruti coming in. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Not only not only Sujay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Sujay. He, I asked my first son, person, uh, what he wanted to do. He took up science in his school for three months. I said, I don't like it, and he quit. Then Sujay took up science, and he completed, and he wanted to do medicine. I said, OK, do medicine. He finished medicine, and then I asked him, what does he want to do? He wanted to do often more. I don't know, you see, the pediatrics is there, so many things are there. And finally, he said, no, I'll do often more. That's fine, whatever you want. Then he did often more. And after that, I asked him, what do you want to do? You want to do cornea, you want to do VR, what do you do? Then he said, no, no, I will not do VR. You'll find all old people coming. I will do VR in ophthalmology. Young women will be there. <laughs> 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 yeah, just like the father is. You know? So I said, okay, do VR in ophthalmology. So it was their choice. I, I only helped them to uh, uh, choose. I just gave them all the options and they chose. And then, and then his wife also was his choice. Uh, he, he chose her and then came to me and said, okay, whatever you like, go ahead. So I don't really uh, impose anything on them. I give them a free will. All that uh, learned from Mohan. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Siddha, thanks a lot. I think uh, the, one of the most important, uh, I would say, a golden message came from Lakshmi. And uh, Lakshmi said beautifully that you treat your staff with dignity. Okay? And respect. And they will in turn take care of your patients. What a lovely message, Lakshmi. Really hats off to you. And that is the reason why I, I think that uh, TMS hospital is still doing so well. It's at the top. And that's why Siddhartan is the luminary, first luminary for us. And uh, over to Dr. Madhavan. Madhavan, you. as you know, is the yeah. secretary. Madhavan. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know the, uh, the all sides of the story. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you and uh, it has been amazing uh, start blistering start so to say by our president and uh, very catchy walk the talk series and of course the year's slogan tamil nadu smiling and tnoi shining and it's all apparent in today's uh, amazing presentation by our dr siddhartham who's uh, a trademark of precision and uh, Perfection, our Dr. Siddharthan. So few catchy things that he told, adopt, adapt, and improve. And do differently and do more. Grab the opportunity at the same time, generate opportunity and grant opportunity. So Absolutely. the three generations, he has done very well. So the program is envisaged by Dr. Mohan to inspire and motivate not only the youngsters, but also to rejuvenate our age group. People who are recovering from the slight downside of COVID. So this program is doing a great job to all, this, all the age group of uh, ophthalmologists in our association. So I should thank our president for a wonderful, uh, uh, I mean, uh, walk the talk series, sir. So again, in a, I, I interacted with uh, Dr. Siddharthan sir before as his secretary also. And I uh, said so he is very passionate about traveling. He's passionate about uh, music, painting that we saw during COVID times, literature. And uh, that shows that the importance of how a well-rounded personality can be. He cannot be a only ophthalmology man. He One should have an well-rounded personality, and at that I learned from him during today's talk also. So uh, only a few things that I wanted to ask, that success does not come instantaneously. It takes hard work, it takes dedication, it has passion, and in between, we do suffer setbacks and failures. So today's youngsters should know that Rome was not built in a single day. They expect to start practice and the next day be one and all in that segment. So they should know that 
it takes time effort motivation and in between we may find failures also in this regard i would like to ask dr sudarthan how we can we i mean it's not an elevator to success success story is not an elevator so how to overcome challenges and roadblocks which we certainly will encounter during our life of practice number 1 and number 2 what he considers as the major breakthrough in his career on road to success okay the first uh, answer the first question is that <clears throat> um see when i started i was not looking at success at all because there's something which madhi taught me you know when you had so many surgeries you know you get tired or when you see so many patients you feel tired and then so at that time once madhi did, i remember him telling me just stop focus only on that particular surgery or that particular patient forget how many are waiting there there will be 10 fellows waiting or five cases waiting just don't just forget about all concentrate focus only on that and that is over okay take the next one so similarly in the practice also i was not having any target or a goal nothing that particular day work that's it over next day live one day at a time at a time so i was i did not have any goal any uh, any ambition nothing just living one day at a time the same way and slowly success came behind the back door that's it. i didn't plan for it at all i didn't plan for it Uh, Siddharth, I just want to modify Madhavan's question a little. Okay, you have come up uh, from scratch and uh, you have built a hospital. So, do you think that every ophthalmologist, uh, not only in Tamil Nadu but also in the country, can achieve whatever uh, you have done? See, so, our period, oh, our oh, time, oh, our yes. time, Mohan, is the golden period of ophthalmology because we have. just before us was a period where ophthalmology meant carrying a box of kannadi the glasses in a cycle that is all ophthalmology was yes. you no know, licensed in ophthalmology hello that's all hello. they had but our time we saw from basic uh, arudas force of uh, icc onwards where we have come so we have seen the entire transition we have seen the entire spectrum we have experienced we have done everything so our period was a golden period but if you join now yeah. youngsters who are coming now and they are not going to have it that easy as how we went along the way we rode the way as ophthalmology was growing microscopy was coming iwi was coming we were there ready but now now is going to be extremely difficult Ch- for the challenging. youngsters going to be very very challenging very very challenging i really don't know how uh, Uh, I can advise. I really don't. Frankly, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I was just too lucky. I may say. Absolutely. <laughs> I think uh, another important thing is uh, uh, actually when we were post graduates and also fellows in Shankar Netralia, we were in that uh, we were in the transition period. Okay, we we were seeing ECC, ICC, and ECC more at that time, and subsequently. uh you went abroad to train i also went abroad to train feco and then we started and became better but nowadays the uh, training is not a very major issue in our country yes, exactly training there are a lot of training institutes across there are a lot of materials for training lot of youtube videos are there so many things are there but establishing is something which uh, uh in a, a setup is something which uh, requires a lot of hard work and of course dud paisa irvono finance is necessary and uh, uh, the passion and passion. i think uh, what is important what differentiated you from others is the passion for whatever you did whether you did ophthalmology whether you traveled whether you wrote whether you did photography you had passion for whatever you did because you are passionate in whatever you doing that made you more successful and excel in whatever you did now i think that is a very important message you have to give everybody you need to have that passion passion okay if you are passionate then you will not feel tired even at the end of the day after 18 years of work, hours of work 
So uh, since Ramakrishnan, our uh, president elect is also there, let's have a uh, because Ramakrishnan has got a huge experience and he's also seen you uh, from the beginning. Ramakrishnan, sir, I want uh, a few words uh, from you, sir. <clears throat> Uh, good evening to all, and uh, of course, uh, I have to thank uh, Mohan Rajan for organizing such a nice uh, uh, program, the walk talk. Really, it's a wonderful. Uh, uh, of course, I have to be very thankful for uh, Sujas for uh, giving the uh, inaugural uh, session. Uh, really, it's a very apt uh, selection uh, to for Sujas to this today. I'm very much uh, impressed by the inspirational uh, speech uh, by the uh, Dr. Siddharth as well as his wife, uh, Dr. Rachmi, at the end. He has narrated uh, beautifully uh, how he entered. Uh, uh, you also correctly pointed out, you know, when, he, when Siddharth told, because of Parson only, he joined Dr. Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> but the passion for something doing beautiful, which Dr. V always used to say, you know. Yeah, whatever you do, do it uh, with uh, happiness. Yes. Yeah, then only you can enjoy the work. The same thing, the fashion for something doing beautiful is what you have taken. So you have taken ophthalmology, uh, but you have made it as your passion. And uh, till the end, you know, you have uh, uh, done so much, so much. And also you have beautifully narrated the, the path, the journey uh, traveled uh, from the... Uh, beginning to the now, what uh, we have, uh, uh, what I admire is the uh, the hard work put by all over uh, you and uh, like me and for the team. And she also mentioned uh, 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 that she will take care of the uh, staff uh, with uh, respect and uh, dignity. And she told staffs are staying uh, with you for uh, 30 years. It is very, very uh, uh, respect, you know, unless you treat them. With all the uh, uh, respect and uh, all these things, it's very difficult nowadays. Really, this shows how you are uh, 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 bringing your institute uh, to the, not only to the patient, but also the people working with you. And of course, other things you uh, beautifully mentioned because there is no uh, uh, age limit or anything for learning, you know, because every day is a uh, uh, learning day. We can learn even something, uh, small thing from our, uh, 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 even with, from our uh, uh, cleaner or our juniors, because such a thing, you know, so nobody can have, so that, that comes to your ego. You told that you will uh, refer the cases to juniors. It's all, you know, so really, you have to learn, especially the youngsters uh, nowadays, uh, uh, they have to uh, learn so much through uh, your, from your talk. Another thing I what I admire is balancing life and work. Uh, because eight hours work, which we cannot uh, think in our uh, set of love, but we have to practice after a certain age because everybody is getting uh, older. No? So you need some uh, rest, physical as well as mental rest. So, uh, at least after 70, all of us know we can we, because there is uh, uh, no way we can take complete rest because we have beautiful, uh, wonderful examples of Dr. V, Dr. Martina, they have worked, uh, uh, you know, so tireless sleep or ever. So, but we can, we can, uh, we can, we can work as much as is possible doing surgery, there is no age limit, doing seeing patients, no age limit, but whatever you do, do it with some, uh, give some importance for your health, that's what uh, you mentioned uh, in your, uh, uh, I think really, um, I learned so much, uh, Dr. Siddharth and uh, Mrs. Lachami, wish you all the best and God bless thank you. Sir. Thank you. Really, thank you very much, uh, Ramakrishnan sir, for the nice words of wisdom. I think uh, Siddharth has uh, hit the nail on the head how to be humble, how to be very simple, and how to be very, very straightforward and ethical. And these are, the, I think, one of the, some of the important messages he has given us. Then a quick word uh, from um, our Vice President, Dr. Nirmal Frederick. Nirmal also knows Siddhartan very well. Nirmal? Nirmal? Yes, uh, President. Yes, yes. So, wonderful evening, all of you. 
and uh, it's a great start uh, dr mohan rajan so you're hitting continuous sixes uh, right from your uh, uh, presidential uh, things like uh, what our cm is doing for the last few months and uh, the app choice for uh, starting this walk the talk i was wondering how we are going to do this uh, because i am a huge fan of shekhar gupta uh, right from his ndtv days he used to conduct this walk the talk program with uh, uh, great personalities and uh, visionaries and i learned a lot seeing that program from in ndtv and then ztv i was wondering how we are going to take this up in a zoom portal so really uh, did it uh, in a great way uh, and it was a great learning experience from uh, dr siddharthan i learned a lot of uh, administration as well as uh, the association work from dr siddharthan uh, as a joint secretary and then as a treasurer to him and what i learned from him one thing was uh, clarity in thought and uh, the communicating that uh, in precise words uh, you would have seen uh, most of us would have seen this administrative manuals the sops for the associations so these are uh, things what i followed uh, and learned from dr siddharthan and of course i uh, hope he doesn't ask my thumb like uh, eklavias did but uh, literally those were the stepping stone for me uh, following uh, each and every step of him in association work i still follow all those things what i learned from him thank you so much sir and uh, about the private practice uh, starting in salem then a tire small sleepy town and now of course it's a big city uh, so i think the progression has been uh, really good uh, what uh, i my question to sidan sir did you ever felt that you would have done better in a city like chennai uh, rather than starting in a tire two town like salem Well, well uh, two things, things I will like 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 now. now. Okay. Okay. Uh, one, is, one is in fact, in fact we, we were thinking of the starting. Yeah, going, going, going. There's a lot of echo. Why is it okay? You have okay. okay. two people have uh, logged together, then the echo will come. Okay now. You're okay now. Hello. Not able to hear you. Okay. Not hearing. Okay. Is okay now? Ah, better, better now. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, maybe my phone was very close. Um. One thing about the youngsters you are asking more. Yes. I did try out the technique, but it didn't really work out. i thought mm. that was a, a solution see now today buying equipments and establishing a center like mine is going to cost several crores which is not possible for a youngster who has just passed out but the possibility is that group practice yes if two three youngsters of different specialties join together it is possible to establish a big center with all the facilities but there you need to have a very good understanding i did try that uh, earlier with my lasic unit but unfortunately i couldn't succeed because i don't know how uh, i don't know how this can be solved but that is one way out if you have a mindset for group practice like what happened in kolkata uh, batacharya no no uh, debashish batacharya yeah, debashish yeah. how debashish did it that is one outstanding example of group practice that is yeah. excellent uh, model Well, if we can duplicate that model, the youngsters will be able to definitely make it big. That's one thing. Second thing, uh, Nirmal asked me about. No, whether you uh, would Chennai, have been yeah. better better in city of yeah, Chennai in than fact, in Chennai. In fact, we wanted to start in Chennai. Three of us uh, were, were, were thinking of joining and starting in Chennai. Myself, Madhi, and uh, Madan Kumar, Daniel. But then Madan uh, somehow happened to go back to Nargoil, and then. Uh, all my backing my entire uh, family was in uh, uh, salem because salem people knew our family so well and my family had built, had such a, a goodwill that i could uh, reap them whereas chennai i was nobody only madhi had a footing in chennai then i said i would rather go back to where i belong where people 
know me and uh, all my staff who joined my hospital were all our ex employees in our transport corporation and in our textile mills and so on so so that was my base so naturally i had to go back uh, but today i don't regret coming to uh, salem but for the fact that you know i am not able to interact with the luminaries like uh, you people <laughs> i can only call up or travel once in a way but otherwise i i would love to drop in every time to your hospital and peep in as much as possible but that is not possible uh, staying in salem and uh, any service if i ask it takes a hell of a lot of time for this uh, engineers to come to salem whereas in chennai at a beck and call you can come and i have to have such a huge inventory of i was and whatever spares everything in my hospital those are the little disadvantages i have in salem uh, in uh, chennai i would have been just somebody in salem i am somebody king. you are I the king <laughs> yes king of salem <laughs> no no you are the king of salem there is no doubt about it and uh, uh, you, i think you uh, rightly said that uh, very important point in chennai you, it's like a ocean and uh, in in salem you are ruling the entire salem and uh, is really fantastic uh, friends i want to say one th- important thing to come to the top is easy but to stay on the top is more difficult i think siddhartan has done rightly that because he has come to the top but consistently he, st- he has stayed on the top for several years together that is called long term sustainability that is because of a solid foundation and values something incredible siddhat hats off to you and uh, since ravi shankar is also here and he also knows siddhartan and ravi shankar as you know is a member of the management committee ravi shankar you would like to say something definitely i would grab the opportunity yes as uh, uh, our past president uh, dr siddhartan rightly said in his words uh, you need to grab the opportunity i also grab this uh, i would like to start with uh, his own style tondrit porodu tondruga aktilar tondrilin tondramai nandru his translation of tirukural book which is a uh, uh, path breaking book uh, which i also had an opportunity to read and i thought uh, uh, tiruvalluvar's words of wisdom Uh, which he has mm-hmm. achieved and uh, uh, sir i saw you as a president when i was a managing committee member and i saw you creating mm-hmm. a revolution during that period and uh, happy it was continued in a great way by our immediate past president dr tangaveli too and presently dr mohan rajan also doing it uh, i learnt lots of things from you indirectly uh, sujay also knows about it when sujay was here uh, at rajanaikar uh, during the preceptorship uh, way back i think um, half a decade back i believe uh, that it was a great time and i had a opportunity to do, uh, take a couple of classes for that team over there and uh, dr mohan gave me an opportunity of uh, uh, talking to them on uh, on personality development and also talk uh, to them on uh, administration aspect which uh, sujay did like to uh, so much and uh, he said uh, dad would really like to hear this also dr ravi shankar uh, i remember in one of the live surgery sessions when you were there at rajanai care long long back probably a decade back and uh, i was uh, on the podium talking something and uh, you had the right to tell me and teach me something and uh, i was humbled to listen to you i made a mistake in english during that time uh, when you said uh, there was something like uh, uh, it is a honor and honor. i pronounced honor. it as it's a honor and you came after the meeting and told me ravi h is silent it is honor, honor. and from that day i corrected myself and every stage i make a point to think you before using that word honor over there mm-hmm. thanks for teaching me i thought i knew english my vocabulary was too good i i do know that i i talk a good english too but that was something which you uh, taught me uh, directly 
otherwise uh, dr mohan has also told me a lot about you and which i had indirectly learnt and now you've been a wise man today this evening to tell all your uh, plus points and you were brave enough to talk mm-hmm. about your negative points you said your zero in admin which uh, uh, dr uh, mrs lakshmi siddhartha is an expert so you were brave enough to tell it out that's where a leader stands i believe a leader when he's talking to the younger generation you should definitely talk about your plus as well as your minuses kudos to you for this wonderful beginning of walk the talk and you uh, definitely taught many younger gen- younger ophthalmologists and many of my age and even elders that how to take ophthalmology and how to go in and become a star in ophthalmology thank you so much for this wonderful evening thank you thank you ravi i think siddharth you have uh, given another important message for all of us that uh, you should know your positives and negatives what are your strong points what are your weak points you should know and now and then you need to introspect that also you mentioned in your talk introspect to find out whether what you are doing is right or wrong and try to improve and improvise siddharth really i'm very i'm very blessed to be uh, to know you not only know you to work with you as well we were very close colleagues as we are fellows in shankar netralia and you know uh, it is really a blessing and it's been a really a opening i would say a blistering innings blistering innings um, blistering innings by sachin tendulkar of ophthalmology here today siddharth hats off to you and uh, Nishant, you would like to say one or two words? Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. So, uh, I think Sharmila Madam has noted that point. Uh, it is always great to know uh, Siddharth sir in terms of his uh, uh, constitution lines. Every point, every line in the constitution, sir, will point out exactly. So, that is something really which impressed me, sir. And I had the honor not only with uh, Siddharth and sir, with his son and daughter in law so jay and shruti are very close friends of mine we are all batchmates together so i am happy like how my father was with you uh, the gen- next generation continues thank you president mohan raj sir and uh, siddharth and sir hats off thank you and and your tamil uh, uh, tirukkural thank you thank you well, versatility is something which is uh, really phenomenal siddharth and uh, no you are uh, really a blessing for all of us you are a blessing for the tnoa your blessing for tamil nadu and that is why i said tamil nadu smiling smiling tnoa shining Shining. because of you siddharth all of you i would say and siddharth more particular today mohan there is one area where i like to compete with you yes and i keep on failing (laughs) it's humor i try to beat you at humor no you are i forgot to tell you have got a fantastic sense of humor but but you overtake me all the time yeah (laughs) <laughs> you yeah, your humor is really terrific i just for, completely forgot because he comes out with some punch lines now and then siddharth i'm really impressed and uh, i think we'll come to the close uh, of this uh, beautiful walk the talk the inaugural walk the talk it's been a huge success many people are watching on the youtube and the facebook of the tnwa as well i have to sincerely thank the the luminary that is one dr siddharth and his family dr lakshmi who has been a main pillar not only for the uh, uh, for the tms i hospital for the family but also for the tnoa lakshmi has done so much for the tnoa i know such a lovely lady she is and also the entire family of the tms i hospital and also all the uh, uh, managing uh, committee members the office bearers of the tamil nadu ophthalmic association uh, my immediate past president tangavelu uh, madhavan dr ramakrishnan nirmal frederick ravishankar nishant and many other people who logged in here sharmila and uh, uh, many other people have logged in here and of course i'll be failing in my duty if i don't thank intas because sham is there sham very much uh, immediately without batting an eyelid he said sir i want to sponsor this he came forward inters pharmaceuticals to sponsor this entire series of 11 walk the talk series which is going to happen on every first saturday first of every month between 8 and 9 pm so 
stay tuned for more webinars on october 8 we are the we are kick starting the tno arc pg catalyst master class and it is going to be one of its uh, kind and uh, we have none other than dr vr vijayaragan to start off this on optics and refraction and uh, yeah. stay tuned yeah, we I also, I also thank Sai of the uh, uh, tech tech who's been uh, man, man big at our show and Sai Numero Tech is really fantastic and uh, my Sai Manjula and the entire team of uh, Numero Tech and uh, Sai Krishnan they have been coordinating this entire uh, program uh, which is really flawless I would say because we didn't have any single interruption uh, one hour back I was in DOS OPL. and continuously the zoom was going on out and coming in and we had a lot of interruptions hats off to sai for this thank you very much sai for being with us always so good night have a good dinner have a good weekend and see you again on 8 thank you thank you thank you for more thank you bye bye and also, and also i would like, like to have, have uh, uh, ideas for all, all the past present all, all the members of tnoa please feel free to talk to me or ravi shankar I, i want some ideas to make it more innovative more interesting for not only for post graduates but practicing ophthalmologists for everybody uh, all the uh, 3500 ophthalmologists in uh, members of tnoa in tamil nadu thank you very much thank you thank you doctors thanks a lot Good night. Good night. Sir.